Hello, and welcome to the Astro Room Tour. I should probably start with my cat, because she's gonna leave right away now that I'm talking. She thinks I'm insane now. She's wondering what the hell happened. That was my cat, Kiwi. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, so uh, this is where the magic happens. Oh, no, sorry. Don't want to get on wiki feet. This is my epic desk. I'm on Linux, like a real boss. I got the SMT3 Nocturne wallpaper for the three nerds who care about that. In the comments, I got my Kudomi Nendoroid, which is one of my favorite Nendoroids, which is why it's the only one that sits on my desk. I try not to keep my desk too cluttered because I like it to be fairly clean. It's kind of dusty. If I zoomed in right here, you'd start yelling at me, and now you are. Um, you can see this little Reaper toy. I actually got that in Austin when I met Schlatt and the boys. They're sleep deprived. This is a little... We found it in some weird little culty shop. It was, it was kind of cute. I don't know what it's called. It's in Austin somewhere. And it just kind of rolls, you know? It just kind of... It's called a Racing Reaper. Oh, ran out of, ran out of juice. Got some guitar picks up there as well. That's my focus right. Highly recommend if you're looking for a cheap audio interface. I think that's pretty much the standard. Everyone fucking uses that. I decided to opt for this translucent keyboard and mouse. Um, I'm in fucking love with this thing. It isn't like the best keyboard ever. It's kind of cheap. I don't think it's that good for gaming, to be honest, but I don't really care. I'm past the age where I give a shit about how I perform in a video game. So I mostly just want to be happy. And, uh, oh God, did you see the cable man? Don't look at the cable manager. <laughs> Linus Text Tips is having an orgasm right now. Just completely flabbergasted. There's even an ant trap over there. Please don't look. I also got a translucent mouse. I'm still getting accustomed to this keyboard because I used to have a keyboard with the with all of the keys and I'm used to pressing the numpad, you know, fingering the numpad a little bit and uh, now I, I just can't. I have to use this fucking FN key, the function key, and I really hate doing that but I'm, I'm getting used to it. I also have this translucent prison monitor. You can buy these uh, secondhand online, or you can buy new ones for like way too much money. But if you buy them secondhand, they'll come with uh, the prisoner's inmate number etched on. On I think I think I can actually probably show it to you. Let's see if I can find it. Actually, I can't. But it's somewhere on the back. There's like a there's a there's a inmate number etched on it. The reason it's translucent, you, know, you can't hide like contraband in it or whatever. Yeah, I just think it looks cool. <laughs> they're really neat. I, I wish I had one for every monitor, but honestly, they're kind of crappy. Like, the resolution on it is not really that good. It's pretty tiny. The colors aren't as crisp. It's just kind of, like, overall kind of crappy, but it looks cool. I care about that. This is my Wacom tablet that I use to cheat on Gardic Phone in the Sleep Deprived videos. There's, I usually just have VLC player on this, or, like, uh, you know, to listen to music that I download from Bandcamp, or, uh, you know, like, like a VPN. Oh, uh, fuck. There's a Burger King drink. God damn it, this is embarrassing. I moved that out of frame, and I forgot that I was gonna pan over here. That's my normal mic, my NT1A, Rode. It's, uh, I think it's called NT1A. It's pretty good. I would like to upgrade it one day, but honestly, that, like, does the trick for everything. I record Lilac Boy music or vocals with other bands. I record Sleep Deprived, Know Your Meme, everything on that fucking bad boy, and it's served me well. I've had it for many years. I have these, um, cool prints. They're from an artist on Etsy. I hope I can put that on the screen, but I might forget. But this artist does like retro uh, Pokemon art in the Sugimori style, uh, the retro Sugimori style. And it's really, really fucking good. Uh, I, I actually love it so much. I, I forget where they ship out of it. It's like Singapore or something, or I really don't remember. It's, it's somewhere over there. <laughs> I know like three countries in the world. And uh, these, these are just really fucking nice. It's like printed on like really high quality, like thick like paper. I don't even know what the fuck it's printed on. The person who's making this is like a legend. Um, so hopefully I remember to put that on the screen because that's just fucking sick. Got my guitars over there. Probably get a little peek at those. I just have like a shitty acoustic guitar. At some point I'd like to get a nicer one, but I'm bad with money. There's a Stratocaster. This is the guitar I've had the longest. I've had that since like 2016. It's got a 100% electronic sticker on it because I'm really into George Clanton. Yeah, I just, I love that little Strat. It's, uh, it's probably fucking busted at this point. Like a guitar expert would probably look at that and like cringe and like shit their pants because they think that this is like a, a waste of time. Like, oh, this sounds like shit. They'd probably say a word like humbuckler or something. Some fucking word I don't understand. That guitar does the job. I, I do want a new one, but again, I, uh, you know, I don't like spending money on things like that. And uh, like, cause this already functions for me. Plus I put so many effects on it, it probably doesn't fucking matter how it sounds. Anyway, I also have a bass guitar over there. That's pretty, that's pretty new. It's an Ibanez. 
I don't know what the fucking model is. I don't really care, but I've had that for only like a year or two, but it, it's fucking fun. I actually really like playing the bass. Like, I think if I was in a band, I'd want to sing, but my second, I, I think guitar is basically the last thing I'd want to do in a band. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I'd rather play the drums, the bass, or sing. Yeah, playing the bass is pretty fun. Uh, I have this desk over here. It's not attached to this desk. This is where I draw. Actually, no, honestly, I don't draw on this. I just keep the book on it. I got it to draw on it, but I, I don't. I just move it over there. I move it over here and I draw here instead. But it holds my my book and my Burger King <laughs> drink and uh, all my uh, utensils, which is mostly just uh, the, the Pilot G207 pen, which I fucking, that's like the one pen I, I just love drawing with it. Um, yeah. So I got some other shit over here. Like I got like my magic deck in here. I've been trying to play Commander with my friends. It's been pretty fun. Yeah, that's pretty much it for like desk shit. Let's move to maybe another part of the room. I mean, this is where Kiwi sleeps, which is on top of like a tower of like just miscellaneous stuff. There's a bunch of like video game stuff in there. I should probably fucking go through that and like sell some of it. I never use any of it, but there's a bunch of like cool shit in here. Like a, literally just a fucking Dreamcast. Like a fucking, there's like a copy of Pokemon something down there, Leaf Green or something. So yeah. I got a printer, that's about it, see ya. This is a pretty sick cat tree that I have. Really fucking happy with this. I don't remember where I bought it, I think it was like on Amazon. Kiwi literally never fucking uses it. It's just like literally a way for her to leap onto something before she gets to the fucking cat bed. So, you know, maybe part of it is because I literally am blocking her from the top part of the tree, which is where cats like to go in the sky. You know, with a fucking box that I need to move that's been sitting there for fucking three months. So that's my bad, Kiwi. But yeah, you'll probably see this behind me in my streams. You know, a huge green screen and a couple bookshelves. Uh, back there, you can kind of see my uh, my art. Uh, I've been framing art that I draw and selling it on Etsy. You should check that out, insectchristmas.etsy.com, I believe. Um, they're fucking expensive, so this is for rich people or people that are, like, actually really into my shit. But yeah, these are original drawings. Like, that's the original fucking thing. Check them out. Yeah, behind me on my streams, you'll probably see these cool bookshelves and this green screen. And this is probably, like, the coolest part of my room right now. Uh, that's the part I'm the most happy with. So I should probably just go through these, just kind of individually. This is like the one on the right. You can see some of my art in the background, so that's kind of... These are my favorites, the ones that I'm not selling. So you can't fucking buy these right now, maybe one day. So yeah, they look pretty fucking cool, you should buy them. This is the top of my shelf. I have this Kirby sleeping plush. It's really fucking cute. Also on the side of my bookshelves, I cover them in stickers from artists on Etsy that I really like, or friends, friend artists that I really like as well. There's a lot of horny stuff on here, a lot of anime shit. You know, I have some on the other side. Uh, I got this from an Ichiban Kuji, uh, and I actually got a lot of these Pokemon stickers in Japan at the Pokemon Center. There's one of my stickers you can buy at lilacboy.store. Or I think it's just lilacboy.store. It would take forever to fucking credit everything, so I'm not going to. You know, maybe if people have questions for like, oh, where'd you get that specific sticker? Maybe I'll answer a few or something in the comments. Yeah, this is my Crollo Lucifer figure. I'm um, really happy on them. It's one of those like like sitting ones and it works really well. Sorry, just in advance, there's gonna be a fucking ton of dust. Okay, so just shut the fuck up. I need to get a duster. Crollo Lucifer, I really like the sitting ones because he just kind of hangs off the bookshelf. My friend got me this Lego. It's like a three-in-one Lego. It's really cool, it's like $20 and I liked the robot one. So I built him to be a robot and he gives a thumbs up, which is really cute. I have the Lego Galaxy Explorer. I built this on stream. You can watch the VOD on my VODs channel, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, this is one of my favorite Lego sets, to be honest. That's why it's in my room. Most of my Lego sets are not in my room. Uh, that's Mushroom Peepee, -pee, which uh, is more commonly referred to as Shroompy. This one's really fucked up. His uh, One of his eyes is way fucking bigger than the other one. They all kind of look fucked up, but I think this one is the most fucked up. I think that there's a soul imbued inside of it, and uh, sometimes I think that it's going to come out and basically murder me while I'm sleeping. Um, I'm not really sure when it's going to do that. I'm just kind of counting my days until this thing erupts. But anyway, I got a Don Dadon plush. This is like literally the only fucking Don Dadon merch I can find that isn't a fucking keychain because for some reason manga just doesn't get good support for merchandise. Um, it'll probably have a ton of fucking merchandise when it gets made into an anime because I imagine it's going to blow up unless they make the adaptation like absolute dog shit, which if they do that, I don't even care. I love the animators, but I was in Japan for a couple weeks. This is the only Don Dadon merch I could find that was like remotely cool. Uh, a lot of people ask about this, but yeah, this is Turbo Granny from Don Don, one of my favorite manga, maybe my favorite. I highly recommend reading it. It's really fucking cool. The art is amazing. This is a Welch's <laughs> jelly jar with Charmander on it, probably from the 90s. I have a couple of these. You'll probably see more. Uh, I got Ray plush. Uh, you can kind of see me in the background there. I look fucking disgusting. There's my, my fucking Ray plush. Everyone fucking knows this thing. It's a meme. We got this Ray farming figure. Got a couple like 
miscellaneous Evangelion games that I'll never play because I can't understand them. They're in Japanese, but they're cool. I don't even really feel like pulling them out because I literally just spent 30 minutes like making my sure my shelf looked good and I don't feel like rearranging it. But yeah, this is a Ray figure from the movie, uh, 3.0 plus 1.0. That's my favorite of the rebuild movies. I think it's really beautiful and it's kind of corny, but I like how positive it is because everything else, Evangelion is really depressing. And to me, 3.0 plus 1.0 is just obviously the most positive film. It shows all of the characters kind of having a good time. And uh, my favorite, honestly, is Ray just farming uh, with the village and just kind of, you know, just having a good time with working class people. I really like this Ray figure, even though it's just, I think it's literally just like an Ichiban Kuji prize. It's kind of a cheap figure, but I just really like that scene where she's farming. I have a Evangelion N64 game up there, which is actually a very expensive N64 game. I believe it's a J Japanese only release and I actually I, the game probably sucks ass I have no idea again I'll probably never play it this is probably one of the most embarrassing things about uh, my video game collection is that I'll never play any of them I can't read them and I don't care to play them but the, the cover looks cool uh, I think someone actually bought that for me on my stream so whoever did that thanks I forget so I'm sorry I think I'm a piece of shit that's fine me too um, there's uh, I almost called it crunchy roll because it kind of looks like the fucking crunchy roll logo or maybe it doesn't I don't fucking know but that's the dreamcast uh, uh, Ray game. I, like, it's like a fucking, it's probably like a dating game. Honestly, I have no idea. Again, I'll never play it. That's like a deluxe edition. It comes with like a Eva mouse. Like, I think it has the Nerve logo on it. I think there's like an Evangelion fucking keyboard as well, but I don't, I don't have that. This is another thing someone bought me on my stream. It's uh, literally just uh, Mahjong, Evangelion Mahjong for Game Boy Color. Honestly, I could see myself uh, ripping out that bad boy and playing it, but it's highly unlikely. Again, I just really like the cover. I think Game Boy Color boxes in Japan are my favorite box arts. I just think the Game Boy Color logo looks fucking sick with the black background. And the covers just look really good. They're really compact. I don't know. I'm fucking stupid. Here's one of my favorite Nendoroids. I think this is actually the first Nendoroid I ever got. Uh, I don't remember, but it, one of my first. It's Evangelion from the Rebuilds. It's really fucking cool. She's like fucking piloting the mech. So you can get like the whole fucking thing she's sitting in. Honestly, I might want to change the faceplate out on her. She looks too fucking serious. Just like Ray like never really looks like that. I mean, she does, but uh, to me, maybe she should look a little less fucking serious but you know she's like fighting and shit so i don't know that one's pretty cool those are really expensive because they i don't think they've ever re uh, released them i hope they do i'd probably buy all of them because i suck here's my next shelf i have some stickers on the side these are vintage sugimori pokemon stickers really like them because pikachu looks kind of chubby and weird they haven't really got the design down yet this is uh i'm hearing kiwi meowing if you hear that i'm not neglecting my cat she's just she's just needy she has food and water this is uh my pokemon shelf well like probably one of many i have a million pokemon shelves Unfortunately, I'm addicted to Pokemon. Ever since I was a kid, there was a stage when I was 15 where I pretended that I didn't like it, but then I turned it to 18 and I got back into it. This is, uh, yeah, just a lot of cool shit. A bunch of Japanese versions of the games because the English ones are way too expensive. And honestly, you know, the Japanese ones look cooler, which is, you know, a lame thing to say, but it's just true. Pokemon Crystal, uh, Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon XD. I have uh, a soundtrack of Pokemon in the background, which looks fucking awesome as a backdrop. I'm really proud of that idea. It, like, makes the shelf feel really full. It's probably one of my favorite shelves. I feel like it could use some more work. Like, I kind of want to put something front and center here. Like, maybe a Pokemon Nendoroid or something. I'm not really sure. But I have these uh, vintage Pez dispensers as well. This is, like, the original Pokemon Pez run. These are my favorite Pez dispensers. I really like the fucking coughing one. I think the coughing one's fucking cool. I just think it's a cool choice that they chose coughing. Probably because back then they didn't really know which Pokemon were successful marketing-wise. So, to me, coughing is just a really cool pick. It's very unique. I have a Mimikyu coin wallet. When I went to Japan, that's where I put all my yen. Uh, I also got this cookie box with Mew on it. I'm pretty sure it's saying Mew, um, but I'm not sure. I've honestly kind of forgotten like Hiragana and Katakana at this point because I just don't care to learn the language anymore. I also have a Togebi jelly jar. That's my favorite one, so I keep this one on the shelf. Just a cool design. Down here, this is like, you know, maybe the most expensive shelf. I don't know. I don't really care about the numbers, but this is where most of my Nendoroids are. Some of my favorites in here are the Boji and the Krolo one. I kind of like any Nendoroid that comes with like a pet. I just think that's cool. Obviously, that's not really Boji's pet. That's like its own sentient uh, human-like being just in the shape of a shadow. But you know what I mean? You got power back there. In fact, can I turn on the flash like mid-recording? I guess not, but you can kind of see him, right? They got like a fucking... This one's probably, honestly, maybe my favorite Nendoroid. It's not 
even my favorite character. I would love a Jin Nendoroid, but they haven't released one yet. That's my favorite character from Samurai Champloo, which is one of my favorite anime, uh, to be honest. I just have a lot of fond memories of watching it, the people I watched it with, and just thought it was really fun and really good. And it's really rare of me to enjoy something very episodic. So, uh, I don't know. I, I think Samurai Champloo is just fucking awesome. I love that director. I'm a big fan of his work. I like Zanki no Terror a lot. That'd be cool if they did a Zanki no Terror and Android. Anyway, yeah, the Mugen one's just really fucking cool. He's like upside down and like slashing his sword. This is my favorite character from Demon Slayer. I'm not really too crazy about the anime, but it is really pretty. And I really liked the arc with this guy in it. I think that was my favorite part of the whole show so far. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess my other ones got Mob Coon in the back. Looking, looking cute. Got Kakashi. I don't, uh, I pretend not to like Naruto anymore, even though I love it, but I still love Kakashi. I honestly think that's a brilliant character. Even if that show or manga has a lot of flaws, I think Kakashi is, like, by far the coolest character and the best one to, like, look up to. There's some other ones here. Just some various, various cool Nendoroids. Don't really feel like going through all of them. The next shelf I have is my Admin McMillan shelf, which is a pretty new shelf of mine. I'd like to get some more stuff as he puts out more stuff. I just, you know, didn't have as much money uh, back in the day, so I was never able to buy a lot of his shit, but I really like him as a designer. I think he's one of my favorite visual artists. So I have a Legend of Bumba Collector's Edition on the right. Uh, that's my fa actually my favorite Admin McMillan game, I think, which is kind of like a maybe an unpopular opinion. Uh, I don't even know if he or the developer really are proud of that game. I hope they are, because honestly, I think it's really good. I, I, I just really like the gameplay. I think it's really fun. Maybe I'm just a freak. Obviously, Binding of Isaac is really cool, too, um, and I like the character design, so I have some figures from that as well. My favorite characters are Guppy and Blue Baby, so it's cool that I have those. The other two are cool designs as well, but it was just part of like a figure pack, so that's why I have those four. Uh, yeah, and then I have an Evangelion train that I fucking got in Japan. I have a couple of these. They're really cool. I, I want to find the Ray one one day. All right, uh, I had to stop recording there for a second because my phone was overheating. It's like playing Minecraft on a gaming PC. This thing was fuming. Literally, it felt like a fucking oven. This is my first bookshelf. This is the one on the left, so I'll refer to it leftward bookshelf. I got this one first. This is my first bookshelf um, that I just tried to fill with. I've had this for a while. A lot of this stuff is a little older than the other bookshelf, but some of it's newer. Um, I kind of mess with it every once in a while. This is one of my favorite Lego builds. It's the Fender Stratocaster Lego. You know, it means a little bit to me because I have had a Fender Stratocaster. I've made most of my guitar-centric sounds on my like boy with a Stratocaster, and so it's really cool to have like a Lego version. This thing is really fucking annoying though because there's so much tension on these strings that every like six months or so, the neck snaps off, flies across the room, and creates a tsunami in my house. Um, but it's it's pretty cool fucking Lego. It's honestly really creative. There's also an amp, but I literally couldn't build it because I have the mind of a rat. Um, rats are pretty smart, but compared to a human, pretty dumb. So I'm calling myself dumb there. Here's a Tamagotchi. Just really like the design of this one. I have to have one Tamagotchi. I mean, didn't like I used to play Tamagotchi all the time as a kid. Got this Kirby wine box. I have a couple of these. Little like terrarium kind of things. They're really cute. I, I really like Kirby. Kirby's Adventure is one of my favorite games. Got a Lego Cat and Mouse Halloween set, which I built on my stream. I really like that set. And I love Halloween and I like cats. I like pumpkins. I have a Godzilla lunchbox back there, which I got in Austin, Texas when I met the Sleep Deprived guys. A lot of really cool memories, honestly, of that trip. But uh, yeah. Yeah, really cool, like, checking out the culty shops that had all this weird shit. It's probably just something you can buy online, like, on Amazon, honestly, but I really like the Godzilla lunchbox. I gotta watch Godzilla. I've honestly never really watched uh, too many, at least vintage Godzilla fil films. I really should check them out. Got Boji sitting on a Welch jar. I got the Tamagotchi. I don't fucking remember what that guy's called right now, but that's, like, one of my favorite ones. This is Figar. It's a Figar toy. I'm really happy I have this. This is a character from Dig Dug, which is one of my favorite video games of all time, just because I, you know, I'm not very good at it. I haven't played it that much, but it's just, like, a childhood kind of nostalgic retro video game that I think is really fun, and I made a Lilac Boy song uh, called Figar, and I actually found this after I made the song, which was really fucking cool, because I feel like Figar is just, like, a kind of a, you know, I don't mean to be pretentious, but it's like a random niche character that like nobody would care about. It's kind of like how they talk about every fucking character you can imagine has some sort of weird online, terminally online fan. That's me with Figar. I fucking love this guy. He's just a cool little dragon. It's really cool that I found that after I made that song in like some toy shop somewhere. So that was really cool. This is my Mako Nendoroid. I've had a lot of thinking recently about Kill La Kill. I kind of want to rewatch it, but I think there's a lot of good uh, messaging in Kill La Kill uh, about, you know, class struggle and uh, class divide. And uh, anyway, I think Kill la Kill is pretty good, but I, I was trying to think, like, what is my favorite character? Obviously, Ryuko is really cool, but I think Mako is my favorite fucking character. She represents the uh, the working class, and she's fucking badass and, like, honestly, like, the funniest character in, in the show. And this fucking Nendoroid is sick. Like, the fucking jacket and, like, the bat. 
I fucking love the baseball bat. It's missing a little leaf that she holds in her mouth, and God, I wish I could fucking have that. It sucks that it's missing, because I don't want to buy like another whole Nendoroid just for the leaf. Back here, I got a character from Demon Slayer. Honestly, I don't really care about this figure that much, but that character is pretty funny. He's holding on to some, uh, some Ness and Lucas charms that I got on Etsy. And obviously here are my billion stickers. There's just a lot of cool shit here. I fucking love stickers. And I'm really happy with how these bookshelves turned out. Feel free to copy my idea. I think it's fucking awesome and I'm genius for it. That's the top shelf. I also have an Atomatone back there which I've never opened. There was a period of time where I was trying to learn the Atomatone because I thought it would be funny for bits on Sleep Deprived, um, but I kind of gave up. Okay, here's my top shelf, I guess. Top shelf other than the top shelf. Second top shelf. Got a bunch of games on here. Got a Black Frost figure here with a cool Shin Megami Tensei. I think I got it from Fan, Fan Gamer mug with uh, Bont Maru. Don't know if I'm saying that right. It's one of my favorite Hello Kitty designs. I really like him and Kuromi and Keropi and honestly, I really like the fish guy too. I forget his name. There's a bunch of games up there. I, I don't really feel like going through them, but there's like a fucking, you know, a bunch of GameCube games like Pokemon Channel and shit. I got the coolest thing up here is probably the Hey You Pikachu Collector's N64 box, which comes with everything in there. I think it has like a controller, but uh, I just really like the box <laughs> to be honest but yeah i got some gba games up there like the old pokemons and stuff which again a, a lot of, i got a lot of these partly because they looked cool but also because there was one point in time where i had a goal of learning japanese to be able to play some of the older games not only to play the official ones that i could just play in english but ones that never really got released over here like an example is this uh hunter hunter game for the game boy color which has a really cool box art i don't even know if this game's fucking good but it'd be cool to try out but uh, learning Japanese is just way too fucking hard. I'm never gonna do that. Next shelf. This is a pretty bare bones shelf. There are a couple shelves that still need some work. This is one of them. Uh, I think I just need like a riser in the back to kind of make this more three dimensional. Uh, it's got some cool stuff here. Sylveon plush, Fan Gamer Sans plush. I kind of like Papyrus more, but that Sans plush is just really cute. Never beat Undertale, but <laughs> I like I like the characters. I have Soul Silver and Heart Gold, as well as Silver and Gold, all in Japanese. Those are kind of expensive actually. Those. Soul Silver Heart Gold complete in boxes. They're even more expensive in English. I don't know how much they're worth, but I think they're pretty cool. Down here, this is my N64 shelf. To me, N64 is kind of nostalgic and a weird console because I think it's kind of fucking bad. I think it's aged really poorly. It might have been horrible even when it came out. The controller fucking sucks. The, there's like some good software on it. I just think the, uh, the console's fucking janky, but that's kind of why I like it. It's just a weird, cool console. I have pretty much every N64 game I would ever play. Cool thing about these is I've actually played some of these because the games are so fucking simple and easy to understand. Also, I've played them a lot, so playing them in Japanese doesn't really change anything. The hardest ones, I guess, are probably like Pokemon because you have to read what the moves say. But even then, you kind of know like what a lot of the moves do. But yeah, these... These are some of the prettiest box arts. They're fucking huge. The Japanese ones just have better designs. It's not because they have kanji on them, I swear. Literally just look at that, that's fucking beautiful. And they're fucking huge. They got the cartridge in them, it's really cool. My personal favorite is probably this Pokemon Snap one because it came in a unique box. I think there might even be like a roll of film in it. That's kind of neat. Down here is sort of a miscellaneous shelf, but there's uh, just a lot of things I like in here. There's a lot of item label plushes here, which I'm a big fan of. I love item label plushes. I just think they're really cute and derpy. <laughs> to bring back that word, we should bring back derp. I have a cool Snorlax mug, an Apalm plush that sits in it. Got a Kyle Farron mug here, who is the artist for the board game Root and everything else that later games does. I'm a really big fan of their board games, especially Root. I think that's like maybe one of my favorite board games of all time, maybe my favorite. I just really like his fucking art and I saw that he had like a Halloween pumpkin mug and I love Halloween, so I had to pick that up. I have a coronavirus item label plush. This is my most expensive one. A lot of my item label plushes people bought for me on my stream. This one is particularly interesting because it's really fucking expensive. I don't even think you can get it anymore, but it was like $100 for some stupid reason. This is a KFC China exclusive toy of a side. It was popular on TikTok for like a month. I'm not gonna play it here, but editor, put a video of it fucking dancing and singing here. That's fucking sick. Uh, some more Kirby Terrariums, and then I have my Berserk volumes down there, which all of these uh, that I have, I think all of them, maybe all but one, people bought for me on my stream. I have them up on my throne. I'm trying to collect them all, but I, I'm a cheapskate. Uh, so thanks everyone who's bought me these. Here's another item label plush. Here's another side of some of my stickers. You know, I just have a lot of fucking cool ass stickers here from various artists um, that just kind of spans 
all the way down. Pretty happy with this. There's still some space down there, so I gotta get more. This one you won't really see in my streams or videos or whatever. It has some miscellaneous stuff. I'm actually, I really like a lot of these things on this shelf. It's just, uh, you know, a lot of my big figures basically can't really sit on those other bookshelves, so they kind of have to go here. But here's a really cool Hatsune, Hatsune Miku uh, Halloween figure. I actually have two of these, which is really funny. They sent me two by mistake, and I just have two. Uh, Luxray plush, Flygon. I'm trying to get like six plushes of all my favorites, so I need a scissor really bad. But I got Kakashi and Power. I actually won both of these in crane games or like arcade games in Japan. So those are kind of special to me. I really like the power one, but I spent fucking $40 trying to win that because I fucking suck. However, the Kakashi one, I think I won on like the second try, so that was kind of cool. I think I literally got this Kakashi minifig for like $2. And then I got this for $40 because I'm a fucking sucker. You know, there's like a sunk cost fallacy, right? Eventually you get to a point where it's like, if I don't keep going, I, you know, why did I waste $30, you know? I have cool art back there. That's my favorite card art from an MTG card by Mark Tiden. You can buy those prints on his website, pretty sure, still. Really like that card art. I really like the old magic art. This is one of my favorite shelves on this bookshelf. It's two really big Evangelion figures. They are Ichiban Kuji prizes. I forget what the, uh, the set was called, maybe Angel Attack or something. It's got this really cool Sashiel Deluxe figure. That's like the, the winning prize. If you know anything about Ichiban Kuji, then you know what I'm talking about. If not, fucking Google it. I'm not gonna explain it to you. But basically I won these. For a while, I didn't win that one, I just bought that one, but I won this one in an Ichiban Kuji and it was crazy. Cause that's like a, there's only one of those that you can win in it basically. That's like a decently expensive figure and I won it for like $10. Basically Ichiban Kuji is kind of like a raffle. Look it up, okay, whatever. Anyway, this thing's fucking huge. I mean, this is my hand. They're pretty big, really cool. I have another one of those uh, Evangelion train model sets things that I got. I think they're electric, but I fucking love trains because you know, I'm a leftist, dirty leftist, and I like Evangelion, so those are really cool. I want to get the Ray one. Here's my fucking Darkstalker shelf. These are two very horny figures, but I swear I didn't get them for the horniness. I just think the fucking designs are really cool. I love the design of pretty much all of the Darkstalkers characters, but especially, you know, these two. I mean, obviously they're really popular, but I really like uh, uh, these characters and I don't know, these figures are really high quality. They're like $100, so they're kinda, kinda bougie. Sometimes I think about selling them because I feel guilty for owning them, but they're really fucking cool. I've literally never played a Darkstalkers game, so I'm a complete poser. I bought that game back there in Japan, and I have the console, so I, I need to play it at some point. It'd be really cool if they made a modern Darkstalkers game because I'd probably get really into it just because I really like the characters. Uh, but apparently, the, that series is kind of dead, which is kind of sad. Hopefully they revive it. Actually, one sad thing just to know, I went to the fucking Capcom store in Japan. They literally had like no Darkstalkers merch. It was like all fucking like Mega Man and Street Fighter, which is cool, but like they need to show more love. Down here, just a couple miscellaneous things. I know this shelf is really dirty. I recently got this. This is a uh, uh, one in 1000 Zack Hill, Lucas Abela uh, collaboration where basically Zach Hill is putting like some really experimental drums over some like Lucas Abela like glass work that he does with his mouth. It's, it's really weird shit. You'll have to look it up if you want to know what I'm talking about. Maybe the editor could show a picture of that guy fucking putting the glass in his mouth. You might have to honestly pixelate it because it might be bloody, but I really expect, uh, really respect experimental music like that. Um, and Zach Hill is my favorite musician. So had to get that. <laughs> uh, Gyoza Fairy, Doro Hetero, Nendoroid. I literally only got that because that's the only Dora Hetero Nenroid that exists. I love Dora Hetero, but they only fucking made Gyoza Fairy, which I think is really stupid. It's funny, but I'm not even gonna open that. I'm just gonna keep it in the box. <laughs> my art is just some of my favorites. You can uh, check out my art, you know, not only to buy, but to just like view it on my Twitter or my Instagram or my website which, you know, fucking links in the screen, links in the description. Check out my fucking Etsy shop, but yeah, these are all for sale. A lot of them are hundreds of dollars, so you probably can't afford it. <laughs> Here's some insects. I'm really into insects, which is probably weird to some people, but I just think they're fucking cool. I have a lantern fly here, uh, some sort of locust, a uh, cicada, which maybe is my favorite insect. I really like cicadas, I just think they sound cool. And a uh, flower mantis. I would love to get more bugs encased in resin, I just think really cool, but they are, you know, everything is fucking expensive. Hatsune Miku, Nendoroid. This is probably my least favorite Nendoroid. Um, not because it's bad, I mean, it's really cute, it's really well done, I just, the character doesn't really mean anything to me, so I kind of regret buying this one for some reason. It's really cute though, but it's just kind of out of the way, because I don't, I don't love it. I don't love it like the other ones. It's really sad. Here's a, uh, 
official Dreamcast, which is one of my favorite consoles of all time. By the way, I didn't really talk about that. I gotta honestly get some Dreamcast games just to put on a shelf, because I fucking love Dreamcast. There was like a period of time during the pandemic where I got really into the Dreamcast, and I bought one, and I bought a bunch of games, and then I like modded my Dreamcast so I could play any game, and there's like a lot of really hidden gems on there. I think it was really ahead of its time. It's sad that it had such a short lifespan on the shelves, especially in America. Sega kind of fumbled the bag, but I think the Dreamcast is like really fucking cool. Um, and this poster is just really neat. It's from that same Ray game that I have on the other shelf. Then I have this official Death Grips tour poster from when they played in, I guess, wherever it says down there. Um, I didn't go to that show. I did go to Death Grips shows twice this past year, which is really fucking awesome. Some of my favorite memories from those shows. This poster is just really cool. It's from the official artist. They like sold like a hundred of them or something online and I had to pick one up. Got a Jack Frost plush over there, like an old amp that I never use. <laughs> There's this lamp that has power on it, which is really cute. I think I want that in a Korean game. And then this is like pretty much the last section of my room that's worth showing. This is a corner for music, basically. Uh, I have a really cool Bjork poster, um, a Jujutsu Kaisen poster. I am actually really into Jujutsu Kaisen. There was a period of time where I felt embarrassed for being into it for some reason, because I, you know, I have a lot of insecurities, but I'm really into it again. The fucking anime is sick, and the manga rules. It's basically like Hunter x Hunter in the modern age. It's really good. I got some of my favorite albums here. I need to replace these two. Um, not that I don't like them, but I think my favorite Death Grips album right now is honestly Year of the Snitch, and my favorite Bjork record right now is Homogenic again, so I gotta swap those out. But I love, in I love all these albums. I love In Utero, uh, Loveless. Probably the album I've listened to like the most of my life, like both of those albums. Got a huge Snorlax plush. Someone bought me this on fucking Twitch. It's really lumpy. I uh, need to put more stuffing in it. I have more. I'm just really fucking lazy. But that thing is fucking cool. It's so huge. Have some stuff around it. I won this Dragonair in a crane game in Japan. I have Blahaj because I'm epic and based. I have a Sylveon plush. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. I have this cool Egg Dog plush from Zamsire, who I really respect. There's a lot of creators in this uh, industry that I really respect, but have no idea how to talk to. That's one of them. That guy's art is really cool. Yeah, down here, this is where my all my vinyl are. So I have some PP plushes from the newer set that are fucking amazing. They come with like fucking swords. I really like the animation they did for that. Got Machine Girl up there, because that's probably what I was spinning last. Great album. Machine Girl's probably, probably my favorite artist right now. I mean, Death Grips is always like heavy in rotation, but Machine Girl, I'm really fucking into Machine Girl. I think their shit is really good. Uh, I got this new Hella record and like some other vinyls. I think there's like Minecraft there. I have a million fucking vinyls. I mean, I can't possibly go through them. That's like one of my favorite hobbies, you know, that isn't really like making something would just be uh, listening to music. And so I try to buy albums, vinyl records of like my favorite albums. There's a lot I still want, but they're really expensive and hard to find. But there's some cool shit down there. Maybe you can recognize some of your into vinyls or music albums. Anyway, yeah, that's about it. Uh, that's my room. Probably the coolest shit I could show you. There's a lot of boring shit, like trash. That's basically the coolest stuff in my room. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Uh, maybe I'll do one like every year, a couple of years. Cause I mean, I had a lot of fun just like talking about the shit that I'm into, but I don't know if this is interesting to anybody else. Got more videos in the pipeline, just trying to figure shit out. Uh, but obviously if you want to stay updated, check out my links in the description. I'm posting art and music all the time doing sleep deprived videos, know your meme, tweeting. I have a Discord server you should check out for updates. Yeah, that's about it. See ya.